Hello. We are going to be looking at getting to learn Lindo. You can download Lindo from the Lindo site. As you go to the site, the sec there is a section called download. You can download the software from on the same site. At the bottom of that page there is a section that is a selection uh, for download Lindo Classic and this software would allow us up to 150 constraints and 300 variables and up to 30 integer variables so it is a very capable software for what we are going to be doing at the classroom download the software and as you download the software it will be saved as a zipped file and you can unzip the file and extract the file and launch the file and that would allow you to um, install the file on your computer um, we will follow these steps um, a little faster it's the same uh, process that you are very familiar with so we are going to go through the installation and launching the process the program After the program is launched, you will see a interface that a new file is um, is opened. But before you do that, I suggest that you go through over the text menus and see what is available in this software. As I said, it's a very um, simple but intuitive and but very strong software and you're entering the information into this software just the same way that you write your LP this is a maximization problem and I wrote it as like 4x1 3x2 and 5x3 subject to a couple of constraints now notice that it's very important that you be consistent with the variable naming uh, as for example x1 lowercase x1 is different than uppercase x1 and they would give you different answers and, and the program will consider that as two separate variables not the same um, the other thing that you should always be careful about it is never to put the non-negativity constraints into the problem the statement of the problem is finished by an um, end at the end of the problem and then we we'll click on the text menu solve and select solve and we will solve the problem and we will notice that the solution of the problem will be placed in a background document if you look at that document the solution is posted here to be able to look at both of them at the same time we are going to tile them uh, next to each other in this case I'm tiling them vertically so on one side I will have the statement of the problem and on, on the other side I, I would have the output in the output you will notice that the objective function value is given as 53 and one-third the x1 value is 3 and one third, x2 value 13 and one third, x3 value 0, and two slack variables both are written as 0. Notice that the first slack variable is written as on one side and the output on the other side will help a lot. But there's also another um, characteristic that we always want to use one of them is of the report and that's the formulation when you click on formulation you actually will print the statement of the problem in your output 
as well. And that is very useful as we'll shortly see. The other one is the Tableau. It will print the final Tableau, the optimum Tableau for you. And that's a very, very useful tool that we are going to be using um, a lot throughout these um, operations research classes. Uh, make yourself familiar with this feature and be able to decipher how the tableau is and how you write them the same notation that we are going to be using in the class now when you have the statement of the problem you can make any changes that is required if there is a mistake you can fix it if there is a you know, like for example addition of another constraint you can just enter the new constraint in there and run the problem as well I'm just adding another constraint 5x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 greater than or equal 15. And I can just simply run that uh, problem, solve it, and get the output the same way that I did for the previous problem. Now notice by having the statement of the problem in the output, we don't actually need to save the statement of the problem separately. But just saving the output, we always have access to the statement of the problem. In this case, I just copied them off the statement of the, uh, of the output and I ran it and I will um, get the same results that um, I got from the original um, running of the problem. Now I'm going to save the output and as I'm saving it I'm just naming it in this case demo and we'll save it. Now notice where you are solving it is usually saving it inside the same Lindo um, document. Now I can actually bring that file back, copy the same statement of the problem that is inside this document and and use that. That would allow you to do some work, save your work, and then come back and use the output the problem in the output and just launch it back again as a new file and run it and get your solution. That, that would help a lot in this process. Thank you. 